Jain Vande Matram, this is Kunal Mehta from Make Me Scientific. We are going to deal with a very easy topic in uh, grade 11 physics uh, that is waves and uh, this is a very small section that is the relationship between the wave velocity and the particle velocity as well as the slope of the graph. So, what happens is when you generate a transverse wave in a rope, the transverse waves move forward and thereby oscillating each and every section of the rope with different phase difference. So, we are going to take up different particles. We are going to investigate the velocity of the particle which are oscillating in y direction with the slope of the y versus x graph and the velocity of the wave which is in x direction because it is a transverse wave. So, when waves go straight in x direction, the particles oscillate perpendicular in y direction. So, let us begin. So, here there is a transverse wave which is moving in positive x direction, right? And let me take different different particles over here. Let me take this as particle number A, particle number B, then particle number C, then particle number D and so on. You can take any particle anywhere. Let me also talk about this particle E also, okay? Now, these are are basically the particles of the rope. So, this is a rope which is basically creating a transverse wave. We are creating a transverse wave on a rope by doing something like this. So, we are giving a jerk on one side of the rope and then the rope turns out to be something like this. And you will see the crest and trough to be formed which will be moving in which direction? Plus x direction. So, we will have to see that these particles which are oscillating like this, we are going to investigate their velocity with the velocity of the wave which is in this direction. And wave velocity we know that is equal to omega by k or where omega is 2 pi f, f is the frequency and then k is 2 pi by lambda, correct the wave number. All right. Now, this is the wave velocity whereas the particle velocity will be exhibited in y direction and the slope of the graph will be basically dy by dx. Okay? So, first of all, we must know the equation of the wave which is traveling in positive x direction. So, we know that y is equal to a sin omega t minus kx is the equation of a wave, transverse wave which is traveling in positive x direction. Now, if I want to find out the slope, slope is change in y axis upon change in x axis. This x is the position. So, this particle is at position some lambda by 2 distance away from the origin. This is origin O. This particle is at a distance lambda. So, x is the distance of the particle, right? Now, if I find dy by dx, that means change in y axis upon change in x axis, that itself is going to be the slope. And in doing this, I will take t constant. So, when I do dy by dx, t will be regarded as constant. So, a cos differentiation is cos omega t minus kx times the differentiation of the inside part that will be minus k because this will go off, this is constant multiplied by minus k and this itself is the slope of the graph. Right. Okay. Now, let us find out the particle velocity. And how do you find out the particle's velocity? This is the displacement of the particle. So, at any given point, point, say for example, this particle is at a displacement y from the mean position. So, this line itself is the mean position. This particle will go up and down. So, I am going to find out dy by dt. That will be the particle's velocity or here I am going to take differentiation with respect to t. So, x will be regarded as the constant term. So, a cos omega t minus kx times 
the differentiation of this part. So, omega only and this part will go off. Now, I am going to take the ratio of these two equations. So, that is dy by dt divided by dy, sorry, dy by dx divided by dy by dt. So, you can very well understand that if I take the ratio of these two, this these two terms will go off and this is simply minus k divided by omega. Okay. So, this is the slope of the graph and this is velocity of the particle. And this is equal to omega by k, that means minus of 1 by velocity of the wave, which I am going to represent it by v. Okay. Now, I am going to simply cross multiply. So, the velocity of particle is equal to velocity of the wave times the slope of the graph. multiplied by the negative sign, this one. This is very important relation to understand. Now, see, this can be applied in two different ways. Now, let us take all the particles and investigate their velocities and the slope. Okay? So, let me first of all take particle number b. Now, if I want to find out the slope, I will have to draw tangent from this place. So, like this. Now, since this tangent is making an obtuse angle, which is greater than 90 degree, this is an obtuse angle with respect to plus x axis. That means over here the slope is negative at point B. So, this part is negative times the minus sign. So, the particle's velocity is going to be positive. So, velocity of particle at B is positive as per this formula. Now, let us try to understand this. See, the wave is going in which direction? Plus x direction. So, P has already completed half of the oscillation. I mean, sorry, completed one full oscillation because already one wave is ahead of it. So, when one complete wave passes through this particle, this particle has completed one of its oscillation. Now, the crest is going to lift this particle up so, the particle is going to travel in plus y direction. So, its velocity is going to be positive because it will go up. Downward velocity is going to be considered as negative. So, what happens is here, if you find any crest behind the particle, the particle's velocity is going to be positive because this crest is always going to lift the particle upwards. Okay? But if you see a trough behind the particle, its velocity is going to be negative, like in case of D. Now, what is going to happen? Already the crest is half ahead of it. So, this particle has completed half of the oscillation. Now, the trough is going to pull the particle down. So, particle's velocity is negative, but let us verify with the help of this formula. So, at point D, if I draw tangent, the tangent is going to make an acute angle with the help of this theta, with the help of this positive x-axis direction. So, the slope over here, slope at D is going to be positive. So, if this is positive number multiplied by minus, so the answer itself is minus, which means the particle is supposed to go, go down, which is very true because this trough is going to pull the particle down. Let us investigate what is going to happen at point C and point A. So, at point A, if I draw a tangent, at point C, if I draw a tangent, with respect to x axis, the angle is 0 degree. Here also the angle is 0 degree. So, here the slope is 0. Here also the slope is 0. So, if I substitute 0, the answer is going to be 0. So, here the velocity is going to be 0. Velocity is going to be 0 because the particle is already at the maximum height above the mean position. So, that means this is at one of the extreme positions. So, the particle stops and then turns back. In the same way, this is at the another extreme position at the bottom and then it is going to go upwards. So, momentarily these two particles will come at rest. So, in, th in this way, you can investigate any type of uh, the motion of the particles by using this particular formula.